Good afternoon, all. I would like to take this moment to welcome you and the Archbishop for this celebration of the blessing of a new house of prayer. Your Grace, we know how busy you are, but amid is all that you have found time to be with us so that you can lead us in this celebration. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Miki so that she can guide us with the program before we proceed to the liturgical part of the blessing. Thank you, Father. One of the things I reflect on in my ministry is how I'm the steward of my role for a particular moment in time. When I was looking at our history in preparation for today, I was reminded that Sacred Heart has dedicated three chapels prior to the one we're gathered to bless today. Because of his long ministry, Archbishop E.D. Howard came to Eugene to dedicate both the 1939 chapel and the 1952 chapel. Archbishop Cornelius Power dedicated the 1982 chapel. Archbishop Sample, we who are the stewards of this healing ministry in this moment in time are pleased to welcome you today. The roots of our mutual ministry in service to the people of this community run deep and I trust extend well into the future. And so I'd now like to introduce Alicia Beamer, our Chief Administrative Officer for University District in Cottage Grove, to give her opening remarks. Thank you. Welcome and thank you all for being here. Our mission calls us to the sacred work of healing. This is a promise made by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Peace when they purchased an ailing hospital and created what we know as Sacred Heart Hospital here in 1936. During our time together today, we will honor our past and bless the future, especially this new chapel to the sacred work. We will also bless and celebrate our caregivers and physicians who come together every day to wrap each patient in love as they provide care. We do this by attending to the whole person, mind, body, and spirit with a particular concern for the most vulnerable individuals among us. I am now pleased to introduce our Chief Executive, Todd Salmas. Uh, thank you very much, Alicia. That was, a great, that was a great opening. Thank you so much. And so I have the privilege, uh, the Chief Executive, to do some acknowledgments before we continue on. And a first acknowledgement I'd like to give is to some of our, who are present here today, some of our workers and construction contractors who helped build this beautiful chapel. It's, it's not an easy project. For some of you who are virtual, there's a lot of activity. Uh, you can just take my word for it on this campus. And so the staging to make some beautiful project like this happen while keeping the hospital operating and everything else is just uh, enormous. So thank you for all your hard work today. We also would like to thank uh, Sister Eileen Trainer for being here today. Um, we thought she started in 1972 and she just corrected me. It was actually 1971. So thank you. Uh, serving as a nurse in our ministry, serving as a charge nurse, starting our risk management program, and now as my boss, as a board member, right? And so, so thank you so much, Sister Eileen, for your presence as well. We'd also like to thank Father Joseph for being here. He's not worked here since 1971, but he still leads and does a great job with our chapel and our mission services. So thank you so much for your leadership. And we also have system leaders that uh, grace us with their presence that have come down. We have Richard DiCarlo. Uh, we have Dr. Doug Cookhook. We have Steve Glenn and Judy Fick. So thank you traveling all the way down to Portland to be with us. It means a lot for us to have your leadership presence with us today. And finally, speaking of traveling, we want to thank um, Archbishop Sample for coming down. Uh, this is to welcome you here. Uh, the last time we think you were present was in 2019. We were blessing our emergency department reopening, which is a very special moment for us. So it's a big deal to have you here, and we're so gracious and glad that you were able to come. And you know um, we share a common mission, a Catholic faith-based mission to serve the underserved. And we just look so forward to working with you uh, as we continue to serve Lane County and all of those in need in our community. So thank you so much. And with that, now Archbishop, I'd like to present you with the key to the chapel, and we ask for God's blessing of this chapel. Thank you. Thank you. 
It should work. <laughs> I was expecting that too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may grace and peace be with you all in the Holy Church of God. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered here with great joy to offer a new chapel to God. Therefore, let us humbly beseech him that he will be pleased to dwell among us with his grace and by his power to bless this water he has created, which we are to be sprinkled with as a sign of repentance and a reminder of baptism and by which the walls of this new chapel will be purified. But first, let us remember that we ourselves, gathered as one in faith and charity, make up the living church, placed in the world as a sign of witness of the love with which God cares for his people. O oh God, through whom every creature comes forth into the light of life, you accompany all people with such great love that not only do you nourish them with your fatherly care, but you mercifully cleanse them of their sins with the dew of charity and constantly lead them back to Christ the head. For in your merciful plan, you establish that those who descend as sinners into the sacred waters to die with Christ should rise free from guilt and be made his members, heirs with him to an eternal reward. Sanctify, therefore, with your blessing this water you have created that sprinkled on us and on the walls of this chapel it may be a sign of the cleansing waters of salvation in which we have been washed with Christ and made a temple of your spirit. Grant that with all our brothers and sisters who will celebrate the divine mysteries in this chapel, we may come at last to the heavenly Jerusalem through Christ our Lord. May God, the Father of mercies, dwell in this house of prayer and by the grace of the Holy Spirit cleanse us who are temples where he dwells. Amen. Let us pray. Send your blessing, we pray, O Lord, on this chapel which you have permitted us to build and grant that all the faithful who assemble here in holding fast to your word and your holy mysteries, may know the presence of Jesus Christ, who promised to be in the midst of all who are gathered in his name, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
a reading from Nehemiah, chapter 8. All the people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe, Ezra, to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. The scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for this very purpose. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the book of the law of Moses, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and the scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy, holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the word of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy, it's holy to the Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The word of God, thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm is Psalm 122, and I invite you to join in the response, let us go to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, Jerusalem. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem is built as a city walled round about where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. As it was decreed for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord, there are the thrones of justice the thrones of the house of David. Let us go to the house of the Lord. For the peace of Jerusalem, pray. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your ramparts, prosperity within your towers. Let us go to the house of the Lord. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I pray for your good. Let us go to the house of the Lord. The brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. Reading according to the gospel about Mark. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went out along the sea all the crowd came to him, and he caught them. As he passed by, he said to Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the custom post, he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors and said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus, Jesus heard this and said to them, 
Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, having received the word of life that proclaims God's enduring love, let us bring our concerns to our God who knows our hearts and what we truly need. God of love, you give us leaders in your church. May, may our Pope Benedict, our Archbishop Alexander Sample, his assistant auxiliary bishop, Peter Smith, and all priests who minister here in the hospital will bring healing and forgiveness to all who seek God. Lord, hear our prayer. Out of the poor and lowly, you sent Christ to announce your favor to the sick and brokenhearted. May all who call on you in the holy space find solace and strength. Lord, hear our prayer. God, source of every blessing, you brought healing to the word through the life-giving death of Jesus. May all who join in Christ's sacrifices of praise at this holy table know your saving power in their lives. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you sent our anointed spirit to complete the work of Jesus. May all who serve in the, hosp in the hospital be channels of the spirit's power. Lord, hear our prayer. God, you give us the oil of gladness through the healing touch of Christ. May all who call on your faith as they celebrate the sacrament of life be blessed with your help, forgiveness, and peace. Lord, hear our prayer. This time now, the chapel itself has been blessed, but at this time now, we will bless the altar uh, because it is at the altar that the saving mysteries of Christ are celebrated and where from which Jesus pours out his mercy and love upon all of us. But as this chapel is, in, in my mind, the heart now of this facility because it's the place where Jesus dwells. And it's the place where the mysteries of love are poured out, but they are poured out from here in a very special way, not just upon the patients here and those who come here for relief in their suffering, but also upon all of the staff and the administration, all those who minister so beautifully to the sick here. So this altar, the place of the celebration of the mysteries of God's love uh, needs this special blessing. water in here. <clears throat> With joy, beloved brothers and sisters, our community is gathered to bless this altar. Let us join in this rite with attentive spirit, asking God to look kindly on the church's offering that will be placed on this altar and making of his people an eternal offering to himself. Blessed are you, O God, who accepted the sacrifice of your Christ, offered on the altar of the cross for the redemption of the human race, and who with a Father's love gather your people at the table of the Lord to celebrate his memorial. Therefore, look, O Lord, upon this altar, which we have prepared for the celebration of your mysteries. Let it be the center of our praise and thanksgiving. Let it be the altar where we offer in mystery the sacrifice of Christ. Let it be the table where we break the bread of life and drink of the cup of unity. Let it be the fountain from which flows an unending stream of salvation so that as we come to Christ, the living stone, we may grow in him into a holy temple and offer on the altar of our heart the sacrifice of a life spent in holiness, pleasing and acceptable to the praise of your glory. Blessed be God forever.
So thank you, everyone. And I'm going to invite you all to be seated. Yeah. So this fourth chapel that's been set apart on this campus to serve as the spiritual heart of our healing ministry. The first chapel that was dedicated in 1939 was replaced by the 1952 chapel, which many of us later knew as the auditorium that was dedicated to Sister Monica. And the uh, most recent chapel dedicated, of course, in 1982. So as we designed this fourth chapel of the Sacred Heart, we wanted to bring forward the statues, furnishings, and appointments from the 1982 chapel, as well as these two stunning windows from the 1952 chapel, as a reminder that change, transformation, and renewal has always been a part of carrying on our mission into the future while standing on the shoulders of those who've gone before us. And so I'd like to invite Todd back up to speak about the beginning of the renewal process for the University District Campus. Thanks, Mickey. And, and before I turn it over to Alicia for closing, I, I just want to say with gratitude, thank you for all of you who are physically present here today. And thank you for everyone who's giving up some of their personal or, or work time to be to be on with us virtually. It's just outstanding and it's a big moment. This is this is what we would call a big deal for us, right? With the new beginning. And, and as I was thinking about the campus and just walking around today, uh, and for some of you who are on virtually, uh, it, you get a picture of uh, the fact that there's like a lot of scrap metal around and dirt and dust and concrete falling. And then you have this new chapel opening up. And, and I was really kind of thinking when I was thinking of that, it's kind of a new seedling that's coming through the ground uh, for a new future for us. And we don't know exactly what that growth is gonna be, but we know that there's new life. And, and how appropriate to have that new seedling that we're really looking at be a chapel that really reminds us as we go through this discernment process and talk with community members and others about how important we are and why we exist. This is a reminder of why we exist as we think about our future. Uh, but I also want to be um, mindful of the fact um, that, that we're not really measuring our impact um, based on the physical structures that we have, especially on this campus where we serve so much of the underserved. Really, our measurement is about how we make personal connections. It's the sacrifices of the caregivers here, but throughout our entire ministry and throughout our entire system that, that work with each other through suffering, both the caregivers with each other as we do hard work here, but also uh, with patients and families that, that really need our support. And that's really the true measure of the difference we make and what this, to me, this chapel stands for. So thank you again for being here today. I look forward to working with you on that new future. And with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Alicia for closing. So thank you. Thank you. Each of us have special memories of the care provided over the years in the buildings that are gonna be removed. And for me, it was walking with Sister Eileen to tour through some of the buildings that are vacated on this campus just after Riverbend opened. Sister Eileen brought the empty rooms to life with her memories of thousands of babies being born, surgeons performing innovative procedures, the jovial care she provided while working as a nurse on urology, and the countless ways that Sisters of St. Joseph of Peace inspired others to carry on the healing in service of all patients and each other here at Sacred Heart. Like many of you, my time in those buildings inspired me to carry on the compassion and innovation of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Peace. I draw peace and hope knowing that although our campus has certainly changed over the years, uh, our mission remains the same, to promote personal and community health, to relieve pain and suffering, and to treat each person in a loving and caring way. We do this today on this campus by providing vitally important services to the elderly, the unhoused, people healing from illness or injury, and people living with profound mental illness. As we look toward the future, we can be certain our commitment to carry out our mission envisioned by the Sisters of St. Uh, Joseph of Peace will never waver. Thank you all very much for joining us today to honor our past and bless our future. This concludes our ceremony and we will close by sharing a video. Thank you.
when I start my day, I look out and I see the cross right across from, from outside my window. And it's just, it gives me a moment to pause and, and to really think mm -hmm. of our heritage and our healing mission. You know, I think back to my time and I think of the people who have, say, retired since I've been here or moved on. And those people are still imprinted on my mind for what I should do in the course of my day today. All of the people that were before me, oh, I always feel their presence. I always feel them around me, those folks that train me. So what makes University District special to me is the people that work here. Um, we're a little community. Uh, it's a small campus. We look out for each other. We know everybody. It's uh, kind of like my second home. It's more like family. Uh, than rather than just the co-workers. The legacy is carried by, by the employees that have come to us because they believe in what, what has been done. Each person brings something that no one else has. I'm very grateful to Peace Health and especially the nuns for starting and supporting the NICU. Uh, I think we've done marvelous work over the years and I'm, I'm still excited now as I was when I first stepped in. This is this is a marvelous place. I feel really um, blessed that the sisters have made taking care of mentally ill and elderly people like that are on the ACE unit a priority because there are people and populations that can't advocate for themselves and otherwise wouldn't be taken care of. When I first started here, you could look through the glass still and see the babies. You could go up there and sneak a peek. And, you know, that would make a good part of the day. I would like to see the hospital get a facelift. I would love for it to be a warm and welcoming space that's really representative of the people that work here and the dedication, you know, that goes on behind these walls. The people will change, people will come and go, but the legacy of the goals that they, you know, leave behind, but then are carried forward by others are what gives this such a great uh, longevity. We couldn't do it at Riverbend without having first done it here at university. I have no doubt that where we will go, especially on this campus, is that we're going to continue to carry on that healing mission and we'll continue to relieve pain and suffering and we will treat each person in a loving and caring way.